Hey guys, what's up? It's Finch here, and we are back for another tournament game. This time around, it will be my game for week one of the Smilegon Snake Draft. For those of you that don't know what it is, basically it's a big tournament that has the format of a snake draft, such as the first pick goes first, but then the team that picks 10th, because there are 10 teams, also gets the 11th pick, and it snakes around. And there are 14 full rounds of that. So the last pick, pick number 140, is also picked by the team that has the first pick overall, if that makes sense, but they also get the last pick of the second round, despite having the first of the first round. So... If you don't know what a snake draft is, then feel free to Google it. I'm not going to spend this whole video explaining it. Um, but with that said, I went second overall in the first round, and my opponent Dice was the first player picked on his team in SSOU in the early to mid third round, I believe. Uh, mid late third round, yeah, I believe. And Dice is a really solid player. Over his long history in Smogon, he's made it to things like Smogon Classic Finals, as well as putting up great records in tournaments like SPL and World Cup before. Last year, he was on my team in Smogon Snake Draft, and despite being very new to SMOU, he even was able to put up an even record as well, which was impressive, and all things considered, I know Dice is a worthy adversary for sure. We've met twice before in official capacities. I beat him twice in SPL, however, back four or so years ago in SPL, and we played in Black White OU. I definitely got very fortunate. This year we played in Black White OU and SPL 2 and I was able to emerge as well. But I knew that in SS it was a completely different metagame and he's a very creative player. So I knew I was going to have my hands full and because of that, right at the bat, I knew I'd take prep very seriously. And the more and more I was thinking about it, I was like, okay. Because he's a bit more of an old generation player, I knew that maybe he wouldn't be as well versed with metagame trends and what is kind of phasing up versus phasing down in the metagame as per normal so I wasn't afraid to use something that maybe was a bit more on the up and coming basis despite it maybe being predictable because I'm not sure he was able to take advantage of it but much on the contrary I wanted to make sure that I was going to cover all of my bases. For example Dice is you know as I said a more outside the box thinker and because of that I knew he could use just about anything under the sun and sun as well for all I know and because of that I wanted to use something that could A disrupt like cheesy teams and weather teams such as that I could kind of retain control and not let those matches get out of hand and because of that the combination of Tyranitar and Extra seemed like a great idea for me here. In particular I was looking more and more at Tyranitar because it offered a few things that not many other Pokemon offered. The big thing is that it's able to check a handful of very common special attackers. Curum, Volcarona, and Rotom Heat, all of which can otherwise be very threatening. You can also do well against things like Gengar that like Focus Blast and Dragapult, especially if it likes U-Turn. And with that also kept in mind, Exodrill with Sand there is able to do very well against Hyper Offensive teams, especially those that aren't of the weather variety. For example, if I'm going to face straight up setups in Hyper Offense, then yes, they might be able to pick up kills, but I can potentially sweep them later on with Exodrill, especially if I keep it out of range for priority from things like Rillaboom or Bisharp. And because of that, I knew right off the bat that Exodrill plus Tyranitar would be a great fit to the team. However, I also knew that I was going to get a nice bulky backbone as these two not only share some weaknesses, but they also don't cover everything, specifically a lot of physical attackers. And in addition to that, they both have some other shared characteristics that they don't love as well. For example, both are vulnerable to status, and both are also vulnerable to ground moves. So, some things I wanted to throw into the team were Clefable, which actually was a combine plus Thunderbolt variant. Initially, I had um, Urshifu Rapid over the Magnezone. The idea was that Combine plus Thunderbolt Clefable is able to cover and kind of abuse Toxpex scores, and Urshifu Rapid is able to abuse, you know, non-Toxpex scores, but it ran into some issues, such as facing things like Toxpex plus Exedrill, or facing things like Amoongus, which can do well against the both of them. Moreover, Magnezone felt like a much better last Pokemon out of their team, and I'm actually using an interesting Magnezone set. Normally we see people use a Substitute Iron Defense set with Body Press, or the Choice Spec set with Analytic or even Magnapole. However, this is a Scarf Magnapole Magnezone with Body Press. The idea is that you're able to still trap things like Skarmory and Corviknight, especially if it's not fully Special Defensive, but even if it is, you can 1v1 it easily. And all you need to do is weaken Special Defense Corviknight, because then plus 2 Drill should be able to wear it out, especially with Paralysis being very common on this team with two Paralysis Spreaders. Um, and because of that, I felt it was sufficient, but also with the extra speed, it's able to revenge kill things like Swords Dance, Rillaboom, Curum, Gengar, etc. I mean, random Keldeo, you know, you name it, Trakion. So I felt like having something that was outside of sand quicker than base 110s or 100s or even 105s, so on and so forth, was very helpful. And I was honestly between it and Dragapult as the last member, and Dragapult made some sense as I had four Pokemon weak to fire and only one resistant Tyranitar. But I, I felt like, um, Excuse me, I felt like Magnezone was a great fit here. Now also what was really cool here now is that I have one Pokemon that traps Spikers and I have two hazard removals in Rapid Spin Exodrill and Defog Corviknight. So 
I didn't actually have to run heavy duty boots on anything in this team, which is actually pretty cool. And finally, I want to run the team out with, as I said before, Corbinet, which ran a special defensive set because I was really paranoid about things like Aegislash, which are serving usage right now, and Alakazam. But it also ran Brave Bird for acrobatics, um, Rillaboom, and hitting things a bit harder like Urshifu or Aegislash to subbing up because then you want to be able to break the sub after they attack into you. And last Pokemon was an itemless, maxed out physical defense Amoongus. It was really great. Glutinous team was able to help spread status. And in addition to that, check things like Urshifu Rapid. Um, what else? So, so the Combine plus Thunderbolt. So Fable is able to be at least paralyze and, you know, spam Sludge Bomb into. Uh, yeah, and this goes on and on and on. I could make up a few things, but the point is it was a good fit. And oh, yeah, it also absorbed Toxic Spikes, which could be a nuisance for Tyranitar, because if you let Tyranitar get status, then Pult teams are going to get really dangerous really quickly and so on and so forth. You just really don't want to let everything get status in this game. So yeah, looking at Dice's team as an interesting build, I definitely could tell he was expecting some bulkier stuff, which wasn't even necessarily wrong for expecting, as my team was pretty bulky, and I tend to default to a more balanced structure as my teams, as you guys can oftentimes see. Bringing things like Stealth Rock Viperior and the Substitute Mixed Age Slash makes for a great synergetic pair, being able to pressure almost every single defensive backbone. In addition to that, pairing those Pokemon with some status and also Specs Dragapult can go a long way. I'm not sure if it was Hex or Fire Blast, I can't quite remember, but regardless of that, was solid. And also, this was all paired with Wish plus Teleport Clefable, which means that in the long term, a Rhyperior and Age Slash can just come in a New, n number of times more than it otherwise would be able to is both Pokemon Life Recovery and that helps set them up a ton and I think that really Team Preview kind of cued me up to saying okay with Aegislash plus Rhyperior it almost definitely is Wish Clap. I was just unsure if it would be Knockoff or if it would be Teleport because he doesn't have another Knockoff user on his team but ultimately I, I was I knew he was going to be Wish, Moonblast, Soft, M Moonblast and then um either softball plus knockoff or protect plus teleport I and mean, it turned out to be the latter but more than that later and last but not least it's blissey you know it's just standard blissey standard corviknight i figured um one thing i was hoping the team preview was that he wouldn't be a shed shell corviknight as if he was shed shell then i know that he'd be kind of quick to double to it and not being afraid of getting trapped because he could just go to Rhyperior or, or blissey on a thunderbolt or bolt switch and that would make it very easy for him in the long haul but also something i was like okay i need to figure out how i can last around this pokemon in the longest in the long haul possible and looking at this matchup, I actually think it kind of, you know, I don't want to say it favors him because I think I'm playing about matchup and like putting yourself in a defeatist position is never good. But I definitely can see how his win path is and therefore I can consider how to counteract it in my own head. And the big things are this. If he is Sword Stance plus Stealth Rock Rapier, then I know for a fact that I'm going to have to find a way to chip it. And I think the big thing is keeping the Amoongus as healthy as possible. But the Amoongus really is needed to pivot into a couple things. For example, Posting status on things like Clefable is important, and also coming in on something like Age Slash after Shadow Ball can get a special defense drop on Corviknight is also important as well. But those Pokemon can't out damage or regenerate heavily, especially not Clefable, so I'm not too worried about that. Keeping it healthy so it could lift something like a plus two um, Earthquake or Rock Blast, which is of vital importance basically. In addition, I, I know that if I'm able to force um, some sort of chip on that right here, then in the long term, it looks like Blissey, uh, sorry, Combine Clefable can do pretty well. Especially because if I get a couple Combine boosts, then it should be able to muscle past Aegislash. Um, especially since Flash Cannon is not going to be too killed unless I get plus two special events. And if he's quicker and he goes for Flash Cannon and I get a plus one life orb, um, Thunderbolt into his face, that looks pretty good. One other thing is though, he might be Iron Head on the Corviknight plus Thunder Wave on the Blissey or Dragapult. And because I knew I had to be careful. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. All right, so let's get into the game here. We are already, uh, we're already nine minutes in this narration, so yeah. Um, right off the bat, I go ahead and I lead off with an Amoongus. Just want to get some status off. He leaves Blissey. I'm like, okay, so I can go for Thunder Wave. And I want Tar to take it because if he's toxic for some reason, then he's going to go rocks. So we'll trade. So I can, I know if he's not going for status, I'll just go drill and I'll spin turn two and I'll threaten him out. But on the contrary, if he's Thunder Wave, I'm totally fine with this taking a Thunder Wave here. I actually don't really care in the long haul because I know it's going to have to switch into Blissey eventually and I'd much rather let it get paralyzed right now than something like Clefable or Amoongus because I want Amoongus to get status off that's permanent and the more, I, the more I look at this the more tar is just needed for A checking drag pull, B setting up rocks and C forcing sand damage onto this Blissey to force recovers. So yeah I knew it was the most expendable member I knew it could still make some loose progress and I knew that he's never toxic into an Amoongus so I was fine there. 
Fortunately for me, I was able to dodge the Thunder Wave on turn 1. Definitely a good start of the game to me. I could get my rocks up and he's scared out by a potential choice band variant or just, you know, any anything that could threaten it. So yeah, um, I get rocks turn 1. And now he goes Corviknight, but I'm scared of Body Press and I'm scared of it being Shred Shell. So I don't go Magnezone as he defogs. I actually just go Fable and I go for a Calm Mind here. Just wanting to see, okay, what he's got going. If he's Iron Head and quicker than me, which it's fair, it's fine. Um, I could always heal off because it's, it's not doing more than 39-40% max. And as you see there, he only does 36%. So I get a decision to make here though. Do I go and heal up here and push my luck? Do I go Magnezone? Or do I go Corviknight? And the more and more I was thinking about it, I was like, okay. If he stays in and clicks Iron Head here, that confirms one thing. That probably confirms that he's of the Shed Shell variety. Because the more I think about it, going for Iron Head into Magnezone is a really bad turn. Especially since he doesn't know if I'm Specs or Scarf or the Substitute variant quite yet. And I, I think that because of that, he would go for the U-Turn or Body Press, whichever one of those two he had. Um, or potentially even switch out hard to something like Blissey if he was one of those sets. Uh, if, if he was one of those items that wasn't Shed Shell rather. Because of this, I know that if he Iron Heads, then maybe I will get flinched and I'll be left down at say, 28 or 26 percent health that's fine because i'll know this is shed shell and therefore i'm gonna have to play my game plan totally differently i'm gonna have to focus on paralyzing the core net getting some chip on it with something like a, a stray thunderbolt here and there and then trying to flinch it down with drill once and also if it's iron head that probably means he's more likely to be specially defensive as well because a it's his age slash answer in this team and B, Iron Head is not as great if you're taking 50 some odd percent from flamethrowers instead of say 30 some odd or 40 some odd percent. So yeah, from Clefable that is, Life of Clefable come on, which is why you're Iron Head to begin with. So it kind of tells me a bit about his set, so I'm okay falling a little bit behind if I could get this information on multiple sets on his team, that's basically what I'm trying to say, because if this is of the um, specially defensive variety, then I'm, I'm more inclined to believe it's a more offensive Rhyperior as well, and so on and so forth. It's just kind of like it's trickle down, if you will. So that was my thought process. I took like a solid 20, 30 seconds. I'm like, okay, I'm okay in carrying this down, especially since my Blissey, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, not my Blissey, my um, my Clefable is not only quicker than his Blissey, but also it should be quicker than the right period. And also I have enough creep, I have like 28 speed EVs to outrun Hydreigon when paralyzed that I should also be quicker than his Teleport Clefable, which also probably runs my negative IVs to just to be quicker than Powerdown or something like that. So all in all, I am more than content just taking the Siren Head. If he flinches me, he flinches me. And thankfully for my opponent, Dice, he does get the flinch. But I, I now have some viable information here. I go Amoongus again, just scared of a potential U turn or something. He gets a crit Iron Head, but that is really not a big deal. I go for the Spore here. And keep in mind, it does not lose its status when it switches out here. And that's something I didn't notice. But I, I knew he switched out there, and I got a Stun Spark and Clap. And then I get a 47% Sludge Bomb off there, which tells me a little bit about his spread. He's probably more physically defensive, but Teleport also confirms he's of the Wish variety. He goes sub here, I'm like, okay, so it's the sub three attacks, Aegis Slash. That's good information to have. He goes Shadow Ball. I um I Brave Bird to break the sub, just knowing you'd be quicker than me. I'm like, okay, if I could just stall some Shadow Balls here until I get dropped, then I'm totally fine playing that game. I could go in and out to Amoongus or in and out to Tyranitar if I'm not scared of close combat or, or um, Flash Cannon, and I'll be fine. And I think I stalled a couple. I think I actually go for Brave Bird here, knowing that after recoil and I cut this, you can't actually two kill me. As you see, I'll be at uh, 46%. Yeah, yeah, I'm at 46%. So even a max damage Shadow Ball, which it wasn't even close to getting. Is he gonna kill me? And he does 31% there, and he gets a drop. So I'm like, okay, it's not actually out damaging boost plus leftover, so I could roost up one more time. And he predicted the Tyranitar there, and went for a flash cannon. That went to waste two shadow balls again, and thankfully that leaves me at full health. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in the driver's seat here now. And I go to Amoongus here on another shadow ball, and all this 42. I'm like, okay, this isn't actually even max plus special attack, but he's getting a lot of min rolls if it is. He goes to Rhyperior, and here's the deal here. Here's the deal here. Um, I click Spore predicting it to be natural cure blissey but as we saw it was not natural cure blissey it was serene grace blissey and i don't know if that is a mistake by the opponent or if that was purposeful for status that is not my um something for me to say um could very easily be a mistake could be it could have been planned i'm not sure dice has used some really interesting things and i'm definitely not one to question his um his tactics is Personally, I mean, he single-handedly evolved the black-white metagame with things like Substitute plus Protect, Focus Punch, Balloon, for example, which I have taken quite a liking to in recent months. So, I'm not one to question his tendencies, 
But my instinct, and I, I'm going to fully open up for this, my instinct in chat, as soon as I saw sleep mod activate, I'm like, oh crap, I already had something to sleep, I got a cover mask, like misclick, I meant to giga, fuck. Um, no, I did not mean to giga drain. That was a bad thing to stand since Julie. Um, obviously people knew where I was coming from, because you don't really expect certain guys to see, and obviously, I'm not like saying something like blatantly offensive, but I, I just want to clarify, I just want to apologize, um, I did not mean to get in. No, I meant to spore. And his being Sir, him being Serene Grace definitely threw me off a little bit there. But it wasn't a huge deal because he, for some reason, and I'm not saying this is necessarily the worst play he could do, but I do feel as if the health and right here was something that was valuable. He went for Stealth Rock here, and I got a Giga Drain off. Not only does Giga Drain indicate to me that he was probably going to be a more slower or bulkier right here, or at least not faster than Michael Fable, but also, it gave me 70% health when I have two forms of removal that are both able to come in re regularly and often. So I don't think that was the best trade for him. I also get a stun for on the Aegis Slash on the Switch, which was a good play by me. And now, one thing about this that makes an interesting dynamic is, Natalie slower than me because of paralysis, he can actually go for a close combat on my Roost and do about 65-75%, depending on the rolls and his spread. I don't know if he's attack investment yet, but I'm actually okay with that because A, close combat only has... 8 pp so let's say he goes for one of the roost and i could still probably live a shadow ball after that if i was at full health prior after like let's say i roost up from 60 to 100 after a shadow ball right and he goes for a close combat i still after leftovers am able to live another one if i roost that off too or one from neutral if i don't roost so moreover that alone would waste four close combats plus if i go to a mungus or clefable on a singular close combat then not only does he waste another pp but also they do nothing and any slower than us and behind a sub and they could break the sub pretty comfortably. Specifically Moongus with a couple Giga Drains and I'm fine. So I'll, overall, I'm really okay with that. He goes sub though and I defog here and he just goes for a Shadow Ball. I'm like, okay. 37 is a max roll. 31 is a min roll given what I've seen. So I know his spread. I really steer figuring he's not going to waste a close combat this early and I don't know what he did in all honesty. Um, if he did close combat, I'm sorry. But now I, I feel comfortable just Brave Burning here, and he goes for what I'm assuming, yeah, another Shadow Ball, it does 36. And he gets a drop again, I'm like, okay. On the downside, I'm probably forced out. On the bright side, he now is only at 11 Shadow Balls. So he's under half his Shadow Balls, and I'm at 6 full Pokemon. I've got 92% of Moongus, I still have 12 Roosts left, and this is over half health. I'm feeling pretty comfortable here. I go Moongus here just on a conservative end of things. So he gets paralyzed. I don't know if he went for close combat, I don't know if he went Shadow Ball. My better grabs, I go right back to Corviknight here, figuring, okay, he's probably going to switch out. And he goes to the Blissey, and it is indeed still asleep. I'm like, oh, yeah, wasn't the smartest thing to say, Miss. Look, anyway, he stays asleep for one turn. I softballed up, and thankfully he stays asleep again. I was fine taking the process there, but that works out quite nicely. Now I go Drill here, figuring he's going to wake up with Thunder Wave, and he does just that. That works out quite nicely for me. Now I double the Magnus on predicting the Corviknight, and I get that right. I'm like, okay, moment of truth. Is he in fact Shed Shell, as I hypothesized? And... Well, as you can see from the switching animation, I paused a second too late. He is, in fact, of the Shed Shell variety. Um, that means that he's going to get the right period for free on a Thunderbolt. Good play. And honesty, and all, I was so close. I was so close to, click, to clicking Body Presser Flash Cannon here. But I was like, you know, what if he is specially defensive Rocky Elm or something crazy like that? And I just didn't want to pass by an opportunity when I knew right period was already weakened. And also, if I go for Body Press and somehow he gets to clip Ablin, I don't want to give it a free wish quite yet. I want to pressure it. I want to keep the pressure up as much as possible. So, Thunderbolt there does invite the Rhyperion, but my Amoongus does fine against it at this point. So, yeah, as you see, he goes Rocks again, but that's fine with me. He's back up to 50% health, but that's not a ton. He goes Aegis Slash, so I double the Corviknight knowing I get a defog gear, and he can't kill me with Aegis Slash, or even he's not going to stay off the Rhyperion. But yeah, I know it's fine there. I go Roost here knowing he's not going to close combat there as a defog's likely. He gets paralyzed if he did close combat. I'm sorry. Again, that's unfortunate timing there. Anyway, he goes to his 53% Clefable on an obvious defog. Good play by Dice there. And I go hard Magnezone knowing, okay, it's time to pressure. He goes for the wish. I'm like, okay. I'm thinking here. I don't want to let this heal up. I don't want to let the Rhyperior heal up. I don't want to let the Corviknight heal up. So I've got some thinking to do. But ultimately, I decide to go for the Flash Cannon. Just use the safest play. I covered that. If it get paralyzed, especially because we kill it in Rhyperior. And he goes to the Blissey, I'm like, okay, again, I'm finally in the target to Thunder Wave, and he goes for it this time. I thought he might go for the size, I thought I was predicting Drill, but I'm like, totally chill. I'm at 100% with Drill, but I, I didn't want to risk anything. I get Rocks off here, and now I know for a fact he's going to go for a Defog here. 
So I go for a Thunder Wave. Uh, he could have went Body Press, but he didn't reveal it yet. And even then I lived it comfortably, so it was, it was fine. He reveals Body Press there, but I can heal up my Clef here if I want to. But I actually go for a Combine. I'm trying to bait, um, try, trying to just bait his react, see what he does, but he, he just wants a Bliss Seed. Honestly, in hindsight, and again, this is in hindsight, so recovering there would have been better off, but it didn't make the world, it didn't make a big difference. It was fine. Now I go tar here just to drop the sand for some chip on it. And also to try and get my own rocks up. I'm just I'm fine taking a little bit of damage as he goes right back to Corviknight. And I mean as you see there, the size of the toss it to 24. You know, I'm still I'm, I'm back up at 88% health now, so it's just not a big deal. Now I get Magnus on it on this again, and I know he's gonna go Blissey this time because he's scared of Flash Cannon, he doesn't switch out, so I'm able to go for a body press in the Blissey. It doesn't have 37 percent I believe the roll is like 34 to 40, but if he's the 200 HP, 56 defense variant, which I'm inclined to believe he is, then 37, 38 is closer to like a mid roll instead of a higher roll. So yeah, I keep doing 39, 37, 38. So I'm comfortable with this. I'm stalling out the soft foils. As you see here, he's now down to 14, and he's going to be down to 13 here. So if I do that three or four more times, then he's out of soft foils. And realistically, it's not a hard sequence to provoke. Anyway, I doubled Amoongus here just knowing fully well that he is going to go something that will take advantage of Tar, such as the Rhyperior. And I get that right. I go for a sick Giga Drain there just in case he goes for what he did before because he could actually live with Giga Drain and Sand. And he just goes Age Slash, so I go right back out to my Corviknight there. And he goes for the Flash Cannon, curiously enough, prep predicting the Tyranitar. Um, also just trying to preserve the Shadow Ball PP. I'm fine with that. I go for another Brave Bird here. Did 45 last time, did 37 this, 39 this time. I assume average is around like 40, 42%. That's fine. He gets a drop on the first Shadow Ball. I'm not loving that. He has been getting a lot of drop, but I also got some Timely Paralysis. And this time around, I, I called the Close Combat. I don't know if he went for it again, but I, I went to Amoongus here. And now knowing that he's in the Shield form and at minus one defense, I figure, okay, he's probably going to switch out. But in case he doesn't, in case he's rich up something I can sleep, I guess I go for Spore. I don't know why I sported there, honestly, but I sport again here. I, I just kept sporting into things that paralyzed. It's silly. Anyway, this time I, um, oh, I predicted him to go for a Flash Cannon or to go back to the Corviknight. So I doubled to the Magnazone. Unfortunately, I didn't get that right, though. I went to the Blissey, but I knew I could safely Volt Switch into it. Just get some chip and bring in my drill on a Thunder Wave or something like that, or a Seismic Toss. I bring the drill on a, 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 a Seismic Toss, unfortunately, but that's fine. He goes Corviknight now, and I go for the Iron Head just to try and scout out the damage. It does 14, so now I know a plus 2 would be doing a bit under 30, and that's fine with me. And he, he seems to want to stay, and he goes for an Iron Head, which is a fair play, perhaps trying to ethical fable. Now I bring my, um, my Corviknight back in, and now I'm like, okay. I need to see how much body presence it does to this. If it's going to do over 25, I might be in business. It does only 19, so this like might be a plus physical defense right here, which is a bit of a nuisance. Anyway, um, I'm finally letting Rock step in the short term. I go to my Amoongus here, and he gets five hits with Rock Blast. And uh, right, right off the bat, I calc this Rock Blast damage, and I'm like, okay, so if he's the standard spread, which, given that Rock Blast damage it is, it would make sense. I um, I take maximum damage of 39% from Earthquake, 39.4, 39.7%, something like that. And if he's the next like jump point or two up, then it's still favorable to live this Earthquake. Max damage might be say 41 or 42% or 43% even if he's got quite a bit more. But I am quite literally max physical defense, 240 or 248 HP. I can't remember, I think I have like eight speed EVs in creep, but yeah, the rest in physical bulk entirely. So I know for a fact I'm favored here. I think he thought I might over predict here. So he went for an Earthquake. And I just go for the safe Giga Drain, and I stomach this at 6%, I Giga Drain all the way back up, and now I'm up to 34%, and it's dead, and rocks are now defogable. I go Corviknight here, figuring worst case he goes for a Specs Fire move, and I, I still can save this later, I do live it after rocks, and also, I don't think he's going to go for that with Tyranitar and Clefable there, and he doesn't indeed. Now, I go to Drill here on a uh, Thunder Wave, I guess, he's predicting me to go for a Greedy Defog, but I haven't revealed Rapid Spin on this year, so I can just go for the Rapid Spin now. As he goes to Corviknight, I'm like, okay, that's fine with me. And since I know it's Jet Shell, any damage on it is good, as it's forcing the potential plus 2 or plus 4 Iron into a kill range, coupled with the fact that, well, I'm just not super worried about this game now. He doesn't threaten me a ton. I go to Tyranitar here in the Drag Pull, and... He reveals to be Specs and gets a crit with the Draco Meteor. I'm not sure if that Specs timid or modest. In hindsight, I didn't really count this damage out particular. I'm still like, okay, yeah, special, special drag pump, not physical. It's fine with me. I um, I get my rocks up here though as he goes Corviknight, and now I go back to Magnezone. Fortunately for him, no power up. But fortunately for me, now I'm in a great position here where I could just um try and get a play right as his electric means gone. I get the Volt Switch off into the Corviknight, and he goes for the Roost. I'm like, okay, 
that's fine. We could push onward here. I get my club and I can heal it up potentially, but I actually go X Jill predicting the Blissey, which is good for me as I threaten it. Now I could double back to Magnezone and the Corviknight if I want. But I think this time, I think I Swords Dance here. I'm like, okay, I want to see how much damage this Iron Head is going to do a plus two. And it does 29, which leaves him at 41 and he roosts up. So I'm like, okay, I need to be a bit weaker than this. So I go Clefable for the thing, a body press. He goes Dragapult. I'm like, okay, I live a Shadow Ball easily here. Even if he's modest specs, it's fine. So I get a soft build up now. Now finally I have that Clefable at full health. I go on Moongus here. I see he goes for the Seismic Toss. And I know it's turn 77. It's a 6 5 game, guys, but I promise we're getting closer here as I'm taking out the right here. Um, I spore there and Age Slash again. I'm trying to get that Blissey to sleep because that'd be funny, but yeah, now I double the Corviknight and see goes Blissey. I get some leftovers there and I go back to Drill here, predicting a Thunder Wave. I get that correct once again, which is good for me. And now I double the Magnezone, triple the Magnezone, I guess, predicting the Corviknight. I'm like, yep, okay, that's perfect. And again, he's scared of the Body Press with Blissey, but I can just go for Volt Switch and chip it anyway. Bring in the Driller to Tar to threaten it. I'm going to find spot. And I double back to Magnezone again, predicting the Corviknight, and I get it right this time. And I'm like, okay, I, I really am feeling myself here. I go for Thunderbolt here. And he just barely hangs on. He roosts it up. Like, okay, now plus two Iron Head. Should have a decent chance to Tokyo. So I double the drill here, predicting the Blue Sea. I get that right. Now I go for the Swords Dance here, I believe. And I think I get the Flinch or Para. Just, I can't quite remember which it is. I do 30%. And yeah, I flinch it. Okay. And that's like, okay, now I can't really lose the game from this point. It's over. I mean, it looked really favorable for me regardless because Magnezone was blowing his team. But yeah. He goes Pult. And just confirming your specs modest. Yeah, I get the Shadow Ball. Moongus does 58%. Double the tar there, predicting the follow up Shadow Ball. He goes to Age Slash, which is good. He's taking close combat me, but it looks like it's almost kind of short lived. It's even Magnezone loves the close combat, and I know for a fact he's not Shadow Sneak at this point. He goes Shadow Ball, which does a bit less, but that's fine, as I can now freely Volt Switch into the drill against literally anything here. Yep, that's fine with me. He goes Clef. Good play by him is to protect the tall sand turn, but it's kind of futile at this point. Is I should be able to prevail pretty comfortably. He goes protect. Now I know I'm like, okay, Earthquake might have a chance at not killing. So I'm just going to go for the Iron in here, take that out. He goes Dragapult once again. I go Clefable this time thinking, okay, he might go for Drag Predicting the Tar. I get that right there. He goes Blissey. And I go for a comment. I'm just like, okay, that's fine with me. He says, good game. He drops the forfeit. I say, good game. And that'll be my first win for this Magna Snake Draft in week one against Dice, a very good, respectful player. Not necessarily sure if he has his um, his feet wet in SS sufficiently quite yet, but I know for a fact he'll come back and he'll probably have some amazing victory in the next couple of weeks. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. And specifically the teams he has to bring in the future weeks. He's a very creative builder. And I think his team here was pretty cool too, but I definitely got the upper hand here. So I'm really happy with how I performed. And guys, let me know what you think of this game and this video. And I'll be sure to bring you guys my games in the future weeks. And if you guys want this team, well, I'm not going to put it in the description below because I don't want to give that information to my opponents who could easily watch these videos as well. But if you guys want teams in general, then definitely stay tuned. We're going to be discussing team building and some other stuff on that in the channel. In addition to that, guys, we're getting very close to 5,000 subscribers. So if you could like and comment to help spread awareness as well, click that subscribe button. If you're one of those uh, 40 to 45% of my viewers that are not subscribed yet, that would be amazing, guys. We're really getting close to 5,000 and I'm so excited to get there with y'all. And um, in addition to that, check out Jambad's book. The link will be in the description. It's just a great piece of learning for a competitive Pokemon. If you're a beginner, if you're kind of a novice, intermediate, whatever you might be, he lays it all out there. He's a foundation that is basically foolproof. It is your one-stop shop to getting better competitive Pokemon. So click the link in the description below and be sure to check that out if you're able to. And if not, then stay tuned to the channel because I'm going to bring you guys plenty of resources anyway, guys. I love this community we're building and I can't wait to keep going, keep helping y'all out and just having some fun with the game that we all love. So yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in and have a great day. Like, comment, subscribe and peace out, guys. All right. Bye.